Hey guys, welcome back. So today is going to be an easy tutorial and it's just basically the stuff you don't like. We're going to make something that you do like with them. So I have this cane that I made a long time ago. I've got a lot of cane. I mean, I've got so much cane that I've made either from videos or on my own and I just make them, I store them, but I never do anything with them. And today I'm going to start going through some of the canes, cutting them up, trying to make something out of them. But this one I don't think I'll use for anything. And it was just um, a kaleidoscope cane. So I want to show you on stuff that you don't like. Maybe, you know, maybe your flower wasn't perfect or your alignment wasn't perfect. So let me show you a really fun way you can get rid of these. Okay, so I'm going to make a veneer out of these. And I don't normally make, as you know, round canes because for me they're harder to, to piece together into something that'll look good. And I really didn't want to use all of this. I don't think I cut enough white or black over there. But we are going to try and see what we come up with. So I'm going to put these together just so I don't have any spaces in between. Try and get these even. So there we go. That way we're not using a whole lot. That way if this doesn't turn out, then it doesn't turn out. Okay. And then we're just going to flatten them down. And no, I'm not worrying about a perfect slice or anything like that. Because you're really not going to see them when I'm done with this. So we got a little bit stuck there, didn't we? So I just wanted to hook them all together. And now I'm going to put them through the pasta machine. I'm going to go at the thickest. And I'm just going to keep turning it. Until we get probably to a number. I don't know. Number three. So, and this is why I overlap them. Is so that they'll kind of stick better. When I put them in the pasta machine. So again I'm going at a zero. And then I'm going to turn it. A one. Gonna turn it to a two, and then I'll go to a three. Okay, so that's what we got. And I'd really like to, I don't know, piece these together so we got a nice square. Then it's easier to work with. So that's all I'm going to do here. I'm going to put this right here. And I know you're probably thinking, why am I ruining the pattern? But you're not really going to see the pattern because we are going to slice into this. So I'm just laying this everywhere, trying to get a little even strip. Okay. And it doesn't matter what size I use, so I'm gonna put white over the top of this. And this is gonna help it stick a little better. And I'm gonna put this through at a number eight. So hopefully I have enough white here. About to find out. Nope. So we're gonna cut it that way. Hopefully this will be enough. Ah, whenever I use the number eight on my machine, it gives me really crappy results. It'll go back through the machine, so I'm not really worried about the air bubbles at this time. And this is just dirty white. 
Um, you're going to put black over this. So I wouldn't grab the the cleanest white you have. If you got some old white hanging around, I just use that. And then I'll turn it into a different color later. So I was thinking of using one of my rollers to make the design, but mine are like three inches. I mean, I could make them five, six inches, but it would be like seven, eight hours in order to print it. So that's why I have mine at the size that I do. So I'm just going to use like um, a Lisa Pedalka or a Christy Friesen. One of their texture pads or whatever you want to call them, little rubber pads. So we're going to add a little bit more black to that. So that should work. Got a little piece right there on the end. Not going to worry about it. Okay, now I got to get this up in one shot. So I'm going to do that. It's easier to cut it when I can see it from the other side. Okay, so now we're going to put this through the pasta machine. We're going to start at a zero and go to a five. And we're going to alternate it just like the other one. So now I have it at a four. And about a five is about as far as I'm going to be able to go with this. Because that took the whole width of my pasta machine. That's weird. That stretch, that didn't. So, we are going to take this now and we're just going to line it up. Let's see what we got here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, we're going to do 5 inches. Okay, I'm going to put that on top. Okay, and then I'm going to cut that in half. So we'll go about three inches. It doesn't have to be perfect. Everything I make is never perfect. And I can either leave it at that. I guess I could leave it just like that. It'll give me a little bit more to work with. So I'm going to leave it like that. If you wanted to, you could, you know, put it on one more time. But we're going to leave it the way it is. And I'm more interested in making it longer than I am wider so that all this will fit. Okay, so now... I've used this before. It really didn't come out that great. I've got these paisleys. These might be fun. Let me see if I have one more flower. And I'll tell you what I'm using. You want it to be thick. Or deep, basically. So, where is my... I have a flower cutter of mine. See, it's just not that wide. It would still work, but I made it a little thicker. Or wider than the than the thing in my bib, so we are not going to use it. And I really thought I had 
another floral pattern. So I want it busy and deep. So I've got this one. I have that one. And then I have this one. That would be wide enough. Sorry, it, it's me, right? And this is what I do. All right, I'm going to use the paisley one here. Okay, so I'm going to start by turning it over. And we're going to use it this way. Okay, you don't want to press down plain fingers because it might stick to your fingers and lift it up. And so I'm just taking paper. And I'm going to hold on to it so that it doesn't move. Okay, I'm going to push it in there as deep as I can get it. You can stand up and do it. Or you can be lazy like me and just sit down. I don't want to pull it off yet. Always afraid that it's gonna move. All right, so I think that should be okay. Okay, and you're just gonna peel it off. And I know that because the pattern is the way that it is, since I'm using it on a already busy cane, that you really can't see it. But once you start cutting into it. start to get a really cool design because of that black underneath. Now you don't have to use black underneath. You can use any color you want. But the darker is always better. You can keep your little pieces and lay it on something. I normally don't because it frustrates me. <laughs> so I don't play with the little scraps unless they're really thick. If they're thick, I can probably do something with them. But I love doing this on canes that just didn't turn out right. Because once you do this, you can't even see what the original cane design was. Now, all you see is the design from your texture. It's pretty awesome. You can go as deep as you want. You can stop when you like it, or you can keep going. See, like this is a really big piece that I just took off. So you could save that. Oh, but I like what it did right here. All right, so we're going to go a little deeper, I guess. Okay, so now we're going to do the center. This blade's a little sharp. And I'm holding it at the blade, at the sharp part, and I just cut my finger. Oh, I don't want to go that thick. I don't want too much black to come out. But 
I have so much cane. And I'm never going to use them. So this is a great way to use the stuff that you don't want to use as a veneer. I'll go a little more over here, like that. Oop, ah, uh, see, sometimes you can cut too deep, so be careful. I didn't want that much black, but I can always avoid that too. So I'm just going to do this a little more. Okay, and then I'm going to just turn this around. on this side. That's not a bad one. Stuff can get really sticky when it's really thin. Okay, so this yeah, so this didn't have any design on it. Haha. <laughs> so let's do this. There we go. We just made a quick design. Let's see what happens when we cut into that. Not a whole lot. Not deep enough. Oh, that looks really good. All right, so just going to take a little bit here off the end. And then I can maybe take a little bit off of this end. It's kind of like a treasure. You don't know what's hiding underneath it. I probably won't use that part. All right. So you saw what that flower looked like. I should have gave you a better view. But this is what happened to it by just putting that texture on it. Isn't that cool? Okay. So... Before I cut these out, I am going to turn them upside down and then put some handy dandy little refrigerator thingamajiggers on it. It's Monday. I don't know names on Monday. My brain can barely function on a Monday. Even though Mondays are good for me. Today has just been a little interesting, and it's been raining, so we had <laughs> we had snow Thursday, we had some Friday, we had a lot on Saturday. Um, my hus husband came home Thursday night, he got st stuck in like a blizzard, he was able to make it through, but it was all blizzardy on him, and my son came home Friday, he got stuck twice going through the mountains to get home. So, thank God he made it through. And, yeah, my daughter works at a hospital in Long Beach. She's a travel nurse. So, she had to drive through the blizzard on Friday. And then Saturday, we just basically all hang out at home, watch the snow, did absolutely nothing. And then Sunday was clear enough for them to head back out so they can get up to work. And here we are Monday and it's raining again. So the dogs have been in for like four days now. They're going absolutely nuts. I really like this paisley. And this is where it's like, okay, do I want to make, you know, like a, a pendant? And I always use the same shape for pendants. I don't know why. I just, I don't know what to make on a pendant. But I don't really like that one. I do like this. So I'm just going to take that. Oop. I'll get a little bit of the tail right there. Okay, and the one thing about using horseshoes on stuff like this is a lot of times you lose your pattern. 
But I have an empty piece right there. God, those are huge. I know people like wearing big earrings. But darn. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if it's if it's too big. But you know what? If it doesn't sell because it's too big, that's okay. And number two, it's just clay, right? You can always make more. Always make more. So we're going to leave that in there. Because I'm going to hopefully get a piece right there. Okay. Now if I want, I can make like a, um, I don't know, like a round circle to fit over the top. If I can find my cutters, oh, that is so big. So that means that earring would be almost three inches. So let's go a little smaller than that. Yeah, I can even do this. All right, what the heck? So, guys, that's what you do with canes that didn't turn out right. Or, you know, you make the veneer and you set it down and go, oh, no, these aren't going to work. You know, you just repurpose them for something else. Because that's basically all that I did. It's just repurposed it. And most of the time, they come out okay. Now I'm sitting here trying to find a piece without cutting into anything else. So, ooh, that might actually fit. That might actually fit. Yes, it will. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about the... I mean, I, I have these little ones right here. Which could make some really nice daggers, right? I don't know if I have enough for two daggers. Well, there's one. If I can get one right there, that would be kind of perfect. Nope, that's going to dig into that. Alright, we may have to piece this back together for me to get that other one out. So when you lift it, just be real careful. And then you can always piece it back down. Uh, or you can just use that for an earring instead. Okay, where is the center of that one? Oh, he came off with the rest of them. Alright, so I'm going to put these in the oven. But let me show you up close what they look like. Let me grab a tile here. probably have oh my god maybe 40 canes that I just never use you know so instead of sitting in the box I think I'm gonna make a bunch of these because that was really fun that was really easy and <laughs> the end result came out a lot better than I think my veneers would have I mean you saw that veneer what would you have used it on you know, I have a hard time. I mean, I can make the kaleidoscope canes okay. But when I go to make them into something, they just always look horrible to me. And that could just be me. And I get that. But this way, you've got this abstract design that looks like you actually planned for it. So now I'm going to be on the hunt for some more... Um, rubber stamps but it seems like all the ones that I bought lately they're just not thick enough so I know there's a company it starts with an M Moiko Moiko I think it's M O I K O and I know she makes silk screens because I bought a few silk screens from her but I think somebody was saying that she also has um I don't know what happened on the cut on that one. That she also has this stuff. Um, these texture stamps. So, we're going to have to check her out on Etsy and see what we find. 
But there you go. There is our cane that now looks like we made this awesome design out of them. So I do have this right here. It's gold and white, or I'm sorry, gold and white or gold and pearl. So I think I'm going to take this apart. And do the same thing that I did with that. Line it with the white. Line it with the black. And I wonder if I can get something that's going to be like a pearl. So, you know what? Before I let you go, I'm just going to check it out. So I have a little bit of dirty white left. So you know what? I'm just going to do a little strip. And if I like it, then I'll do a bigger strip. You know what? Let's just see what happens if we do that. Because gold and white, eh, that's kind of boring. You know, so if you want, you could do a Skinner blend, you know, in like three or four different colors and just use that. So it kind of opens up the door to all kinds of stuff that you can do with it. Okay, so here's some of that dirty white. So I'm going to run this. This was at a number eight, right? So this is just, just to play, right? And if it works with this, and it basically works with anything, you know, if you have leftover flower canes, you know, everything that you've made that you might have left over, you know, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You can just squish it all up and, you know, so like I've got, I know I'm ADD today. I've got this right here, you know, it's just the end of a cane. You can cut that out because once you get the design and shave it, the only thing that's going to come through basically is the colors, not what you made in the first place. So I think it'll look really good. So let's get some black here. And the black I wanted a number five. And since this is just a sample, I'm not really I'm not really worried how clean the black is. Unless it turns out really nice, then I'll just paint it. You know, I'll just grab a grab an acrylic marker and paint the back of it. And yeah, it was probably a mistake just to use three of them. I should have cut out four, but I was afraid that if I liked this a lot, then I wouldn't have enough to use for another one. So, again, it's just a sample. So I'm going to stick this through, starting at a zero. I'm going to rotate it and keep going until I get to a five. Okay, so yeah, it's not perfect, but that's okay. All right, so now I think I'm going to cut it like that. Cut it like that. I'm going to cut that like that. So yeah, I got a little bit of waste, but again, it's just for play. Okay. So on this one, I'm going to use mine. This is a little sticky. Again, you don't have to use cornstarch, but I'm going to play it safe. And it doesn't matter anyways, because it's going to come right off on that first strip. And it's still stuck anyways, so. So there, I went really deep. Okay, so now it's stuck really nice. All right. So let's see what this looks like, right? Oh, that's a good piece to save right there. And another thing you can do is you can use your shavings. So if I wanted to, and they're big enough, you just take these saving, shavings and just throw them on... Uh, I'm going to show you because I have to now. 
I get a piece of black. It's very small. But that's okay. So you can take like these shavings, you know, and just set them anywhere you want. Wow, I don't know if this is, this is not souffle. But wow, these just don't want to stick on here. Or is it souffle? I have no idea. I think this is Primo, but I get it if it's souffle, because souffle things don't stick to it very well. See, if your hands aren't sticky, mine are right now. You know, just lay that on there. But what I was trying to say was after you dig really deep and you can't get anything out of this anymore, you could stack them back on each other. And cut more strips. So you don't have to leave it on this base if you don't want to because you've got three layers of black underneath. So when you're done making what you want, you can always go back in, stack it one more time. And use your texture roller or your sheet again. Yeah, I don't like that one. And just keep going over it and over it a few times if you want. All right, so I think we got enough here. But see, yeah, this is just gold and black. So basically, anything you want to use, you can. Okay, and now I've got this nice little sheet right here. So I can make a whole new set. Okay, so we're going to cut these up. might want to wash your hands if they're if they start getting really sticky but just right there I could probably make a really nice pair of earrings it is thin I will give it that so I would probably back it with a little more black and then come back and do it again but that's what we got so hopefully you like that I'll probably cut this out off camera make it into something, and we'll come back and show you when they come out of the oven. So hope you thought that was fun, and we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so we are back. I got everything out of the UV light. I set this up before I started the video. I'm not quite sure why, but this is all the cane that I have. And what we just did was a game changer for me. Because again, you know, I've got all these canes I just am not happy with. And I can't see me using them for anything. You know, this is something that we just did. And I did a tutorial for this one. But I'm not real happy with it because... Let me show you the center. Which a lot of you probably say that's not a big deal. And it probably isn't. But I don't know what to do with this unless I wrap it with something. But you can see that it's not quite even right here. But this might actually make some really spring, um, really nice spring whatever we just did. I like to say Makumigani, but it is and it's not. Um, but I've got all these canes. And I mean, they go three to four deep in here. This is the one that we just used. So I'm going to show you what it looks like now. Um, but I've got so much that I'm not going to use. So to me, it's... It, it is. It is such a game changer because now I can just tear all this apart if I want and do what I did. So, let me show you what came out of the UV light. I goofed and one of them got a little bit too close to the end. So, I'm going to have to redo that one. As you can see right here, it, it's got a piece right here because I must have laid it too close to the end and the light stuck on it. But let me put this on a tile.
Okay, so those are the ones that we worked on. That is this cane right here. And you'd never know. I mean, you never know that this was a flowered cane. I just love the way it just completely took it and did something completely different with it. So there's the the Moresh or Moroccan tile, whatever you want to call it. A couple names of it out there. And then that gold and white that I had. Those are a couple more. I don't know how I got blue on this one. I love this one. But my sander died, so I was only able to make one. And then this one right here is from Susan Bailey's um, basket weave tutorial. This is the rainbow one. And that's what that ended up turning out to look like. So I'm really happy with these. Uh, I think these are going to look great. These are the ones that I just do not have sanded yet. Even the daggers look good. Here's those cameos. And I goofed and cut a little bit of the cameo off. So I had to cut the other one off. So now we got kind of a, I don't know, we got a weird shape. They'll still work for earrings. And let's see what else we got in here. Set these aside. I'll get on these as soon as my, my drill recharges. You know, that one's really cool. You know, I love the designs in that one. This is off that rainbow cane as well. And what else we got? This one's pretty cool. This was the center of those horseshoes. So I like that. It's a little it's a little off center. This one's a little different than that one. So I'll have to sand those to make them look more even. And then again more of the daggers. We've got some of the gold. So if it's metallic, I'll probably resin them. Everything else, I think I'm just gonna throw it in the tumbler and let it do its magic there and then I've just got the little pieces that'll go on top like this yeah so that's what we got out of that it was so much fun you guys are gonna have to try it and now you can say oh well I messed up on my kaleidoscope cane but now I've got something I can turn it into and if you're gonna get any of the if you're gonna get any of those rubber mats for textures um, don't get real thin ones, like the one that we used last week, I think, way too thin. That was the one that we did the um, Clausene. You don't want that. Uh, Christy Friesen has some. Lisa Pavelka has some. And you can find some people on Etsy. So make sure you've got a nice deep pattern so that you can, you know, scratch away the surface and still have more to go if you had to. But if you do the thin ones, you are not going to be able to take too much out. So, hope you guys had fun. I did. Um, I think tonight I'm going to just sit in here and start taking apart canes and do exactly what I just did. So, I hope you liked it. We'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And we'll see you next time around. Oh, and we're off if we can shut off our phone. So, never mind that. So a good way to say goodbye, guys, is when your phone does not want to shut off. I don't know what's going off with it, but I'm pressing the button. I promise you I am pressing the button, and it does not want to shut off. So we're going to try this. See you later. Oh.